Hey everybody, how's it going today? I've got the next part of the portable solar generator video getting ready to go here. And it's been a long time in the making. I've been just slam busy as usual, so not to make too many excuses, but here it is. I'm going to get this done today, hopefully, or get a little bit more done on it and uh, show you guys how to do it. All right, so anyways, once again, we got the rigid case here that we picked up at Home Depot a while back. And I did some stuff up in the front here, as you can see. I don't know how the light's going to hit it right now, but we got the 12 volt stuff, the light meter, and the switch. There we go. All right, so inside we got a few pieces that we showed before. And I disconnected the, the back so it'll kind of flip down a little bit better. And uh, I'm just going to stick the battery in here. Now I do want to use the Life PO4 battery in this 20 amp hour like I said before. And I'm going to use the 600 watt Ames power inverter. And this is what we're going to be using on this particular build. I am shooting by myself. All the cameras are not a focus so if uh, things don't work out perfectly I do apologize. And uh, I'll do the best I can with what I got here. Anyway, so today what we're going to do is we're going to pull the Ames inverter apart, open that up so we can get that rated amount inside. We've got the charger for the battery here. We're just going to use a standard AC power uh, 2 amp battery for the uh, Life PO4 battery. Now this is a 12 volt Life PO4 battery, but this is going to charge at about 15.4 volts or around 15 volts. Um, and that's just how batteries are, you know, like if you, your car battery is a 12 volt battery, but it actually charges up to about 14.4 volts. And these Life PO4 batteries, gonna, the way this uh, has been set up and made in series and parallel, this is going to come out to about 15 volts. And then um, we use a buck converter to, uh, we use a drop buck converter to bring our voltage down to 12 volt and where we need it. Um, mainly for these 12 volt leads here, so we're not running so much voltage there. Uh, but then so it has a balance all across the board. Then we'll put in a solar charge controller. We'll put in the uh, connectors for the solar charging, solar input, and then to be able to piggyback another battery bank on top of this with a lot more power. And uh, this will be our first build. So anyways, let's get started. And we will start on the Ames power inverter. Looks like so. Got a few screws in here. You got four in the front. And then we got two on the side, two on the other side, and four core screws in each corner in the back. So. We're just going to pull this apart really quick and really easy, I hope. Drill. Magnetic bowl for our screws. Now this whole back should just be all together. Shouldn't be an issue. Shouldn't have to pull anything apart off the bit right now. Remove the four screws. This is going to just kind of pull out of there. and You're going to have a little bit of wire leads inside. You'll be able to see this a little better in a minute. I'm going to just pull the bottom of the base up. Base is up. There's the inverter. Now we're getting probably too much light going on. Try the other Sony here. So there's the inside the inverter. Now we'll flip it over this way. Pull out the other screws. We don't really need the heat sink and that's why I'm moving the, removing the guts out of this thing. The big blue body is you know basically a big heat sink and um, you know it's something to house the system in but because we're putting this in a case I don't need another you know housing or anything like that so that's kind of how we're looking now with all the screws out if anybody's got any advice on the Sony RX 100 uh, five or the 100 V on how to make it not shut off. That would be awesome if you could get that to me. I would really appreciate it. And inside this inverter, there's this little dealy here that's holding the uh, the inverter in place. And there's one on the other side. Thank you. 
I want to be careful messing with this board so I don't get blasted from one of these caps underneath. But there we go. There's our inverter in a nutshell. And now we're going to save a little bit of weight and deals with this. And that was for the heat sinks and these uh, little dealies here. These were running into the deal with. They have some grease on them, some paste. Uh, the only thing that we really need off of this, and we don't even really need that, but we're going to go ahead and use it, is our uh, on off switch here. And we will use our wires here. We can just wire direct for our terminals. We don't need any of these plugs or anything. So I'm going to just nip those off of there. And uh, I'll snip them here, here, and here. And then the only thing I'm going to need is uh, the switch. Now the yellows are earth ground so that's not really that big of a deal. And then we have our... Now uh, some of you might say we're about to ruin this uh, inverter because we're going to buck the warranty as soon as we do this. Pull that out of the unit. And we'll try to pull this through. Might have to unplug this to get it out. So we're just going to cut these off and that blue goes to the off button so we'll just resolder these not a big deal all right and then hopefully this will push out really easy it's going to squeeze the back of this here these uh little on off switches go right through the metal casing got a couple of little presses right here top and bottom kind of like a computer plug just kind of press them down and they usually pop right out and that's how we got that there bottom there the off is the circle I is the deal and just for fun I'm gonna yeah right, so we got the inverter uh, apart and next we'll go ahead and get ready to start installing it into the box and then uh, run the cables as well for the battery so we get the battery in there and then we'll get the butt converter in there. And we'll get the other battery charger in there. We'll bring this down to the bare guts as well because we don't need all this casing and all these other wires. We can hot solder everything on that. And we'll be good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna be taking this all apart. I've obviously cut off the front. Here's these little positive and negatives for the deal. I've already removed a couple of screws. I thought I would get a head start. Pulling out the screws to the fuse deals, just gotta Kind of hold those in there and you got to hold the nut on the back because there's this little nut in the back and just start spinning these off. And this is how we void warranty on products really quick. Once we crack this open, warranty was done. Oh well. So anyways, um, I've been slam busy. Uh, I got some pretty exciting news. I just ordered a ton of Tesla battery modules. I ordered a bunch of the Tesla S modules and they should be coming here this week. They just shipped out today. And then Friday, actually Friday is when I ordered them all, which today is Monday and I ordered everything on Friday. Back of that's off now. And I also, I ordered um, six of the Tesla Smart for two car batteries. Like, so I got a whole, a whole pack. So when that gets in, I've got to tear that down, pull all those battery packs out. I think those are like 3.5 kilowatt batteries at 55 uh, volts right around there. And then the Tesla S modules are the Panasonic 868, the Panasonic 18650 cells that are fused both positive and negative on each side. A lot of you guys have probably seen those, some of you haven't. Uh, those package, those um, battery modules are about 23 inches long, about 11 inches wide and about three inches tall. And um, so basically it's a bunch of these you know, but in a much nicer looking configuration and built by a robot. And I've got one started here that I've been working on. Hopefully the, the camera will focus in on that. Um, I've got a couple of cells fused in on these 18650s. And these are my Samsung 25Rs. And I did all the spot welding on these, no soldering. Spot, uh, spot welded on the fuses. 
This is a 20 amp hour battery. Same as this. This is lithium. This is Life PO4. So this is lighter and smaller. This weighs 3.2 pounds. This weighs 5.2 pounds. And you can see the difference in size here. They're the same length. Uh, but this one's about a third shorter than this one. And it is the exact same width. And two pounds lighter. Life BO4, as I've said before, is a much safer chemistry. Doesn't blow up, doesn't burn. Um, but this one, we build it properly. We can, we can uh, take a lot of those factors out of that as well. This is uh, the way we're gonna be building most of all of our batteries. We will be using Life PO4 as well uh, in certain applications for people that want them, uh, just because they're such a safe chemistry. Um, but it does make it, you know, we, we, we need a bigger, a bigger footprint to put the Life PO4 and it's gonna be heavier. So we're gonna have several choices. Like I said, we're gonna have the lithium choice, the Life PO4 choice, lead acid, or not lead acid, but sealed lead acid, and so on and so forth. And then in the next few videos you're going to start to see coming up, um, we're going to run right down here in front of me, you can't see it, but I have a bunch of solar panels I've had for a long time. Two uh, AGM batteries, uh, about 100 amp hours each, so I'm going to connect those to a bigger inverter. And then pretty soon all the power and all the energy that we're going to be using in the studio is going to be strictly battery power, solar panel power, and uh, inverter power. And we're gonna set it up right here on the bench so you guys can see it working all the time as we're plugging in our soldering irons and our uh, spot welder, uh, all the things I use in here to do everything with. And um, you guys will actually get to see it running and you know, running hard, heavy, you know, industrious uh, stuff. You know, I mean, when we're talking, you know, running, running soldering iron, 40, 40 and 60 watt soldering irons, that's heavy duty. My spot welder runs uh, a 30 amp, uh, load all on its own and I'm really excited to get that up and running and put that on solar and, and battery power and see how well the inverters can handle that and then I'll actually have my own inverters made and I've been dealing with a company in China to do that now here is the 600 watt Ames completely gutted and down to the bare bones to what we need it for and that's quite a big difference from what it was uh, in the earlier stages spin this around let you see it it's the bottom of the board and this is pretty small. I mean, this is only about six inches by four inches wide. And I'd say this weighs not even a pound now. Um, this is pretty, pretty lightweight. And uh, so the majority of the, the, the weight in the uh, inverter or in the solar generator is going to be the battery pack, which is this one. And then I'm going to actually uh, do some other tricks. And I have some other bells and whistles up my sleeve. This is this torn down. I'm gonna pull out of this video for right now. And uh, once again, I'm super excited about the batteries that I got coming in, the Tesla Model S modules, and also the Tesla Smart for two car modules. Um, I'm gonna be sharing all that with you guys. We're gonna play with those. If you guys have any questions about them, let me know. And then I am gonna be using those modules in my solar generators, and I will be selling those to the public as we stated earlier. And then I will also be using my own Tesla style battery. Um, and I will be building mine the same way that Tesla built theirs. I will have liquid cooled and liquid heated batteries if you're going to be in a cold environment. And that's an option that you can add onto your generator if that's what you want to do. And uh, otherwise, they'll come without liquid cooling and liquid heating. My battery here that I'm using is five times the amp uh, capacity as far as uh, constant discharge is concerned. And so, in the real world with you know one of these big power modules or one of these big battery modules that we're talking about with four or five hundred batteries stacked up it's really not that big of a deal anyway but you know they're be, they're able to pull about 200 amps i believe it is out of those tesla modules and if they can pull 200 uh, amps out of 404 four, out of 444 batteries well then i should be able to pull five times that amount of amperage out of 444 of my batteries and uh, you know, it's just simple math. So anyways, man, once again, guys, I appreciate you watching. We're almost to 500 subscribers. Be sure to keep subscribing, tell your friends. This channel is gonna get better and better, I promise you. And uh, I'm gonna get more videos out for you guys. Let me know if there's anything you wanna see me do. Let me know if there's anything I've done that you don't like or you do like or you want something. And for those of you who have been emailing me and PMing me and we've been talking back and forth about the generators and stuff, I will be in touch with you. Don't fret. Um, I'm just really busy trying to get everything together and get all the product in order. 
So I will be in touch with you guys. You guys still keep in touch with me. We'll have the website up again real soon. For first, it'll be westthattechguide.com. And it is there. It's parked. You can go there. You can navigate it if you want. But there's nothing you can do today. We'll get you a phone number where you can call in, talk to some staff members. We'll get you an order form up there where you can put in your information to uh, win free stuff. We'll also have some order forms up there for the solar generators. And uh, all of this stuff is finally starting to come into play and you will start to see some really good stuff here in the next couple of weeks to a month. Anyways, guys, I'm Wes. I'll see you the next time. Thanks for watching.